Finally, we are in the last question. This would be the end of the EOT for the Great Toile Advance. We are nearly there, but before we start the question, I have a couple of minutes to tell a few things. So if you want, you can skip the two minutes or two, three minutes and directly jump to the question. The thing I want to tell you is, I want to thank each and every one of you who have subscribed to my channel, watch my videos, and who shared it with your friends. I really, really appreciate it. I thank you so much. Before I continue further, I just want to tell, when you're watching the videos, please do make an attempt to write down the problem to solve it by yourself as well. And I wish that you get easy questions in the exam, the questions which are already practiced. And I just hope everyone great, gets great marks. I cannot fail to mention my own dear students, the students of Al Uruba School, Sharjah, the, the current students, the passed out students. Because of them, I had started the channel, the Best Math channel. And I am very happy it has benefited other students as well. I'm so glad I've got wonderful students. They are always support you and understanding. Just when I had some, you know, initially I had issues with the writing pad. It was not compatible with my laptop. Without any hesitation, one of my students, Salim Saif, he, just the next day when he came to know about that, he bought, a writing, bought his own writing tab and gave it to me so generously and he was not taking no for an answer. <laughs> and even now I'm using his uh, writing tab, which is compatible to my laptop and I really appreciate it. I found inspiration always from my students and other students. For example, there is one student in one of the Telegram group, Razan is her name. She is so inspiring that she helps each and every student, tries her best, shares her notes, material, everything, and solves uh, questions and helps other students to understand better. That's amazing. And uh, please keep that going and help each other. And I hope everyone benefits from all the help. And I always used to be inspired from one of my student, Ali Yasser, who was only for one year. I taught him only for one year before he changed to another school. All this inspiration helped me to, you know, uh, do this channel. And I thank you all, every one of you, for supporting my channel. Now we move on to the last question. That's the question number 20. It is to understand the mean value theorem and use its applications. I will quickly solve this problem. There are only a few problems here. And if you want the detailed explanation, I have put a video in the description, which will go in detail. But if you want to solve the mean value theorem, it's pretty easy. You don't need to go in detail. If you just know a few things, that's more than enough. Now then we will solve it over here. Here they have told to apply mean value theorem. We need to find a value C that satisfies the conclusion of mean value theorem for this particular function on the interval 0 to 2. Now we will solve this problem. The first condition, whether it is continuous. First one, it's continuity, continuous. Second one, differentiability, differentiable. Let's check. This is a polynomial function, so yes, it is continuous, yes, and differentiability, yes. You can write it as two statements. The given function, the given function is continuous, continuous, and differentiable. So it's D differentiable. at the given interval, at the given interval. Why I'm writing this is because the uh, exam will be right. You, it's better you write this out, okay? Write this statement. This is a polynomial, for more understanding, this is a polynomial function, and polynomial functions are differentiable throughout all real numbers, from minus infinity to plus infinity. So yes, at this point, it is differentiable and continuous. So that's done. Hence, we can use, hence, we can use, uh, use mean value theorem, okay? Now, this is the statements. After this, you need to do the solving of the mean value theorem. I'll write the formula, uh, formula of the mean value theorem. Here, mean value theorem is given as, f of c f dash of c equals 
f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. Now let's go in uh, the first two steps are done right now. Let's understand what exactly is mean value theorem. If you see closely at the left side, what do you understand? This is basically this derivative that is the slope of the tangent line. Okay, makes sense. What is the right side? This is the slope of the secant line. There are two points A and B. Now, what is the difference? Now, if this is the function, this is the slope of a secant line, two points A and B. Whereas the slope of the tangent line, it should only touch one point. This would be the slope of the tangent line. Now, the mean value theorem finds the value of C. C is such that you will get the two slopes, the secant line and the, uh, the tangent line parallel to each other. That point we will find out where it is, two parallel lines. So basically, if you solve this formula, you will get it. Now we have to solve f of b, f of a. What is f dash of c? We will write it in a while. But what is f of b? This is a, this is b. It will be f of 2 minus f of 0 divided by 2 minus 0. How do we find f of, first let's do 2, or f of b is equal to f of 2. So this is 2. That is equal to 2 cubed minus 2 squared minus 2 plus 1 let's see the answer it's 2 cube is 8 8 minus 4 minus 2 it's a bit 2 2 plus 1 is 3 now f of a will be equal to f of 0 that is equal to it's very easy when it's 0 isn't it all the x's dissolve to zeros only remaining thing is 1 sorry 1 and i wrote 3 okay this is the answer now, what about f dash of c? First, let's write what is c. f of c is c cube. Wherever x is, they just put c. Okay, what do we do? We just substitute these values instead of x, right? Same thing. Now, here then, let's derive it. f dash of c would be derivation of this. When you derive it, you'll get 3c square minus 2c minus 1 and this 1 will be 0 when you derive it. This is the answer. So let's substitute everything over here. This is 3c squared minus 2c minus 1. That is equal to f of 2 is 3 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0. Now we will simplify 3c squared minus 2c minus 1 is equal to 3 minus 2 is 2 by 2. So what's the answer? It's 1. Let's take this one to the other side. It'll be 3c squared minus 2c minus 1. Minus 1 is minus 2. This goes to the other side, becomes minus 1 here. That is equal to 0. Now, this is the quadratic equation. Let's find c. It'll be two values of c. You can just use the calculator mode 5, 3. It's fine to use calculator over here. Otherwise, you have to just do factoring, which will just take a long time. So just use the calculator here. What you do is press mode 5 and 3 and then we have to just put this 3, 2, minus 2 and minus 2. What's the value of C? It is uh, 1.21 and minus 0 0.54. Now, can you take this answer? Negative 0 0.54 is beyond this limit. It's less than 0. So we discard this because that's... Uh, you know less than that but we can write it as plus and minus we will write it in terms of this that is 1.21 why i'm writing like this is generally all your answers will be in terms of like this you know uh, with the radical symbol and all that so it is 1 plus root 7 by 3 and the other one was minus 0 0.5 or something this is 1.21 this is the answer now at this particular point no, we have just found the uh, value of C that satisfies this condition. That's it. This is the answer. C is this. Or it's 1.21. Let's see what is given over here. In the... It's given as 1 point root 7 by 3. Why the other one is not taken? Because it's not in the limit. That's why we have not considered it. This is it. This is the answer. Uh, if you have written all this and the first step which I have told, it's more than enough to get full marks. You do not need to graph. Just graphing is for understanding. Here we can see... See, this is continuous and differentiable. This is mentioned here. 
Now, why is this big bracket continuity means? It's always big bracket, but differentiability we put close bracket because we are to test for differentiability. But over here, since they have just told from year to year, we we just put the small brackets at differentiability. The mean value theorem then says that there is a number C in 0, 2. Yes, that's what's given. And then you use this mean value theorem. We got C value as, uh, sorry, we got the this the right side value to be 1 and then the derivative just equate it to 1 and make it over here. It's a bit confusing over here but what I've written in detail you can just rewind the video and pause it and write it out properly and the C value what we got is this. So if you look at the graph now at 1.21 here you can see there is a tangent line and over here the slope line these are parallel okay so that's 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 it. Here again, you are same. You are to use the same thing, but make sure you find. See, the hypothesis is not true. You need to make sure you do the first two conditions: differentiability and continuity. Now we have studied it in the MCQ part. If you go back to the previous questions, that's the question number twelve or thirteen, something like that. We have dealt with differentiability and continuity, so that concept must be known. Now here. Looking at this, I know at zero it's undefined. It is not defined within this interval. So this cannot be. We can. Uh, so wait one second. The hypothesis is not fulfilled. Why over here they are mentioned. This is not defined at x is equal to zero. I don't know why did they did this. In the first place itself, this, this is not required. You should just tell it is not continuous. It is not differentiable at x is equal to zero which is within this limit. So the hypothesis of mean value theorem is not fulfilled. Okay, so you don't even need to do this next steps. Okay, you don't need to find the derivative or anything. This is not required. I don't know why they did it. But anyways, the derivative of this would be C minus one by, you can equate it and that wouldn't make uh, sense, I believe. C now, okay. Why they have done it is, I'll just tell you, because even if you do the C value, it does not exist. Why? Here, when you derive this as 1 by c, when you derive it, you'll get negative 1 by c squared. That is equal to f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. I don't think so this will be asked in the exam because, you know, there's nothing to solve. If you just write the hypothesis not fulfilled, it's over. That's the answer, right? But over here, they're just proving to show you that it does not exist. Now, let's just solve this up over here. What happens? F of B is there, right? That means this is A, B. Let's substitute over there. We will get 1, positive 1, because 1 by 1 is 1, minus of what is F of A? It will be minus 1. Again, minus 1. Divided by B is what? B is 1, minus of minus 1. So you will get 1 plus 1, divided by 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2 by 2, that's 1. So here, this entire thing is equal to positive 1, I'm sorry, is equal to positive 1, not minus 1, okay? Now let's solve this up. C goes to the other side. It's negative C, negative 1 equals C squared. Take square root on both the sides. What is this? Square root of negative 1 does not exist. So this is not possible. This is another way. Even if you had applied and solved, it'll be error, okay? You can't solve this at all. So that's why we can understand that this does not exist because the hypothesis only is not fulfilled. Here, okay, uh, now again over here, x squared, does it exist? No, it's not continuous and not differentiable. That's it. Even if you do, you will get an error. Over here, tan x, uh, tan x is 0 to pi. At pi by 2, that is half of pi, it has an asymptote, right? So basically, there's discontinuity. So it's not possible over here also. Why? Because see, at pi by 2, you know, we cannot, there is a discontinuity. So no, it's not possible. It's not continuous and discontinued. Uh, no, it does not exist. So that's the thing. Because it will be undefined, basically, when you solve over here. And then even over here, you can see this is a cubic graph. Uh, it's not differentiable. That's why it's not possible. Why cubic graph is not differentiable? Because it's, you know, the graph, though it's continuous, it's like 
something up uh, it's a vertical line and then it goes right so it's not possible it's not differentiable so the hypothesis is not true uh, we cannot do uh, you know the it's it's not different but it's continuous because the values are continuous everywhere oh this is a cube root here cube root it's uh, not con differentiable because of the straight line in the middle and now we here okay this is c continuous everywhere continuous everywhere and differentiable everywhere here what we did in the example problem in the beginning same thing can be done and you will find a c value see the c value is there and then this is also the same thing polynomial and others also even if it is say a square root function but it depends on the interval now when they give you an interval of zero to something generally one by x is not continuous or differentiable at zero so you cannot use it even a cube root function it's not differentiable at zero but here it's polynomial polynomial you can easily use the uh, mean value theorem and solve it up here we, we have the, done this but whatever i written a while ago like that time i written in detail so use that steps okay write such steps in detail and then solve it up not only this a little bit more detail and that's it please do practice more problems and i just wish you all the best i hope everyone gets great marks and please do write practice in writing don't just watch the videos practice in writing and if you have any doubts post them in the comments and i'll try to get back to you very soon all the best and take care guys